John Coltrane was an American jazz saxophonist. Uh, he was born in 1926 in North Carolina. Um, and um, he studied music and learned various instruments uh, in his youth. Uh, in uh, 1945, he joined the Navy. Um, and this was his uh, first big experience as a performer, apparently. Um, he joined a, a Navy band uh, called the Melody Masters, um, but despite being very involved, he had to be billed as a guest performer to avoid complications because he was black and the band were officially a white band. Uh, however, by the time he left uh, the Navy service in 1946, he was leading the band. Uh, he had a long career um, uh, in jazz sax. Uh, he worked with uh, names like uh, Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk. He got into free jazz. Um, and uh, so between 1957 and his death in 1967, he led at least 50 recording sessions and guested on many more. Hi, my name's Dan. So this is an album of tracks that were actually recorded during sessions for another album called My Favourite Things, um, which were then assembled and released by his label, which was Atlantic, without his permission, um, and just to confuse things even more, after he'd moved on to a different uh, record, record label, which is Impulse Records. Apparently this was, uh, this was not an uncommon thing to happen. It wasn't an underhanded thing or anything. It's just... Uh, the label owned the recordings, and they could do with it what they wanted in those days. Um, so, um, back in my 20s, I started getting into blues. That's quite a long time ago now. Um, my, uh, my dealings with jazz came a bit later than that. But somebody once asked me, what's the difference between jazz and blues? Um, and the reason why I remember the fact that somebody asked me that is because I've struggled with that question ever since. Um, and listening to this album has actually made me rethink that distinction again, because uh, I would have to say that this is both blues and jazz, okay? Uh, and how can something be two genres at the same time? Uh, so, I mean, both genres have got very loose definitions, I would say. Um, but what, uh, one of the strong characteristics of something that you can, uh, and you can say that it's blues, is that there's a, a particular 12-bar sequence of chords uh, a certain kind of um, uh, use of notes, and I don't know if you've heard of people talking about blue notes before, so it's bent notes and flattened notes. Um, and uh, while I would say that not all blues conforms to this idea, uh, quite a lot of it does, and you then uh, tend to uh, uh, attach the, the genre blues to other tracks by the artists who tend to make this sort of music. Uh, however, because that's about structure and uh, about the chord sequence, uh, it is something that you could use in other genres, as it were. So um, when I say this is an album of blues and jazz, I would say it's an album of blues done in a jazz style. I like that kind of hopefully makes a little bit of sense. So this is the core blues idea, which is this 12-bar uh, uh, chord sequence. Some of the tracks are you know, bluesy in their, their um, choice of notes as well, but not all of them are. And certainly the rhythms aren't always uh, blues. They come from all sorts of different uh, places. But there's definitely jazz as well because it uses a, um, uh, what you think of as a, a jazz combination of instruments. So we've got saxophone, drums, bass, and piano here. Uh, there's jazz improvisation going on here. Um, uh, so... Yeah, it's managing to be both blues and jazz at the same time. Uh, so effectively, it's blues with various different feels to it. Um, but what did I think? Well, it's quite nice listening. It's fairly accessible. Um, yeah, it was okay. Um, I didn't think it was a masterpiece of some kind, but maybe you have a better understanding than me. Maybe you know about this uh, more than I do. If you do, I'd love to know what is so great about this album. Please let me know in the uh, comments down below. That's it from me for now.